uh, hey everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, our guest today is Leslie Kritzer, and uh, you may know her from Beetlejuice or Legally Blonde or Vinyl on HBO. I think I, I actually, here's how I met Leslie. I don't know if you even remember this or knew this, but um, so you were doing a musical about that took place in a trailer park. Right, yeah, at, right, yeah. right. Um, what was yes. it called? The Great American Trailer Park. Musical. Well, there that's you go. Right. And Marcus Henry. Marcus Henry. That's right. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. um, Marcus Henry is a set designer, a dear friend of ours, who designed the set for that. And uh, are you still in touch with Marcus, by the way? No. Uh, okay. Wait, no, he didn't design the set for that. that was, oh, he did. Uh, that was uh, a forgetting thing, but it wasn't Marcus. Oh, so maybe he did the costumes, the costumes or the shoes or something like that. Marcus, I think he did that. I think he did costumes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> over 10 years Leslie, so, so many shows again funny Leslie that. was so, so funny. funny that I was like I called up Mark and said who is that person and then lo and behold like a few years later you just uh, showed up at the Barrow Group in, in a class yeah I was I, like I need help yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and you know you're unbelievably good on, on all fronts and then um, we've kept in touch and and, and uh you know, I love both of you guys and your work. And yeah, and right. likewise. So, um, Leslie is such a talent, you know, singer, uh, dancer, actor, and has been on Broadway and shows. Many and, times. Yes, many times. So, um, so um, we're so pleased that you're here with us today. I, there's so much going on that we could talk about. Um, I'm going to start with the virus uh, stuff, which is, and, and my question that comes up, and I have this question for myself as well as you, which is, what what have you been doing under these uh, conditions where we're in, you know, practicing social distance? Are you, you are in still in New York right now? I'm in New Jersey. I, we live out in like 30 minutes outside the city. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm in Jersey. We have a house out here. And uh, yeah, so I was a commuter like many of the actor people out here. And um, so, yeah, I, um, I started strong. I'm gonna say that, I'm real strong. I was working out every day like I normally did. I would, you know, like I was like, I am, I'm just gonna keep on going. I'm like, you know, full steam ahead with everything that I would have done. I was, I was like, okay, well, I might as well sort of enjoy this. Um, and so at first it was good. And then I, I started taking class actually with some people in LA, some self-taping classes, cause I, I, and this is the room where I do all that stuff. You might, you know, I have lights in here. I have yeah. backdrop stuff. I made this room. I kind of wanted to like challenge myself to do the things that I knew were going to be coming. Yeah. Which was that and for the foreseeable future, I think that's going to be a lot of what we're going to be seeing maybe more. And I've been doing a lot of research. Um, so everything was going really good. I'm, I do a lot of voiceover. So I built a studio upstairs and by built, I mean, it's in, my, in the closet in the attic. So I had to kind of figure out how to do that and quickly learn, um, cause I do a bunch of voiceovers right now, how to get, you know, got a new microphone, all of this stuff, set it up so that I can record these commercials remotely. Yeah. Um, and have them sound good and learn new technology that usually you'd walk into a booth, as you know, and yeah. record and the engineer, you know, so you're learning all this stuff. And there's been a lot of conversations with SAG about all of the stuff that we're doing and the kosher is it not, but we're doing it because yeah. everyone has to work until they figure it out. So it was like, I was busy. I was super busy. And then um, about a month ago and you know, just, keeping in touch with people. A lot, a lot of people see, say, I've seen more people because yeah. of quarantine. Yeah. So that was kind of great. Especially for me, old friends. I don't know old if that's, friends. yeah. From college, reunions of casts that, you know. Um, and then about a month ago, I think when things started to get harder, like um, it's it, like, this past month has been harder to motivate. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, to do any sort of writing, to do any, like it's been harder, but I've been, I've kept myself accountable by being in certain groups that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And of course, now we have a bunch of things going on, which we can talk about that I'm starting to be more involved in, which is remoted, reinvigorating me to be so socially more aware and conscious about what's going on. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it's been a ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I assume you're referring to what's happening in the wake of uh, George Floyd's murder and, and uh, all of that. And um, what, what, what do you, what, how do you participate in that movement? Well, um, I'm still figuring that out because there's, there's a lot of, I mean, right now there's a, a big movement happening in the theater world. And I don't know if you're aware of that petition. That's I am, yeah. And so I think that is just starting with the awakening of actually in our world, what is happening in the theater world and in the arts in general. Yeah. Um, so that is new. That's just, I'm starting to kind of have conversations about that. But aside from that, I, you know, I've been going on some protests in New Jersey. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't go to any in New York yet because I've, I've been hesitant to be around too many people because mm -hmm. my mom's in a nursing home and mm -hmm. I haven't seen her in almost four months. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have to be careful in the event that they say, yeah, you can come tomorrow. I just, I want to be able to know that I'm all right. So I, but I have started going on protests because I feel it's important to be a body there. Mm -hmm. I've always, mm -hmm. But I've been getting tested a lot. So <laughs> So that's, that's been going on. But that donating money, really um, educating myself. I'm starting to read a lot, a lot more. I'm in a study group right now with a bunch of people uh, in the arts and we're, we watched 13th, which I thought yeah. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. watched yeah, with my husband and getting together with people and having bigger, harder conversations Yeah. Um, about what's going on and, and trying to be an active participant, not just um, because it's, you know, everyone's doing it right now. Yeah. I really am trying to challenge myself to kind of not only become more educated, but what can I do that is not going to just be for the next month? Like, well, mm -hmm. how can I be an active participant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious, like, what if you, uh, by the way, the letter that uh, Leslie's referring to, there was a letter, I think it, I think it was entitled, um, a letter to white American theater was, was that, yeah, I, was that I, the letter? I, my phone's dead, but I can, you know, the, the web, the, it's, it's circulating, but yes, it's, we see, yeah. we see American we see you. Yeah, yeah, we see you we was see the, you. was the, the mm -hmm. dumb thing. And it, it was undersigned by, um, many, 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 uh, I think, I think the official term they go for is, um, you, you probably know it and I don't, um, but I want to say black indigenous people of color or something like that, mm -hmm. BIPOC, yeah, yeah. Is, is that yeah, it? Black indigenous people of color. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. uh, right. And, and, you know, and it's a very um, specific and, and lengthy list of grievances and, and uh, long-term frustrations. And I'm curious, you know, in your studies so far, and I get that you're new to it, as, as are we, this is something we're tackling internally and at the Bear Group's staff, at our staff meetings, we're talking about these things regularly and uh, I'm wondering what have you learned so far about things you can do to be proactive and and participate in a meaningful way I think it's, it's interesting I don't know if you are familiar with who Daniel J Watts is mm -mm. he's astounding he's, he's really he's also he does spoken word if you if anyone has a chance to go on his Instagram page he does these live performances of his basically poetry slam live performance art. Okay. He's done at Joe's Pub before and he's writing a new one. I think he's going to be doing it live, but he does them live. I mean, you guys would flip out about it. It's mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. how he uses this medium now to take what he does live, which is already incredible. Anyway, the reason why I'm bringing him up is that he wrote a post that said, dear white people, and it was like a list. And it's like, number one, we hear you. Number two, like, it's not about you right now. It's about listening to what's, it's, it's about really listening and taking in what is happening. And that 
there are going to be black people that are going to agree with what you're doing and black people that are going to be against what you're doing so be prepared for that too which i found that to be so powerful and also like okay you know because a lot of people are going to have a lot of different conversations about what i post or what i what petitions i sign or you know what i'm trying to do so to answer your question sorry i'm long-winded no 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 it's good it's good what i'm trying to do is a not make it about me yeah my personal feelings right now because i don't think um as much as i you know i have a lot of feelings about a lot of things a lot of sh a lot of shame a lot of guilt i think about things maybe i should have said or should have done or should have done differently Right now, I think that's from my own examination, not for me to like necessarily proclaim on Instagram for me personally. And that's, I think that's the vibe and the messages that I'm getting to really educate myself about what it is in our community that has kind of happened with systemic racism, not only in our, you know, in the government, in our communities, but also within our theater community and the arts community and how we played a part in that either mm -hmm. willingly or unwillingly and so the com the, the most powerful thing has been the conversations that i'm having with people uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, i am going to be participating in the broadway coalition um, i'm saying it wrong but it's uh, a three a three day zoom and it's free anyone can sign up um it's it's the broadway collective or whatever uh and it's really addressing these issues and it's so Today, the first day was for um, only African-American people in the arts. And then tomorrow and the next day are for collective discussion. Mm -hmm. I'm sure hundreds of people are going to be on this Zoom call. And it's sure. really, about really kind of opening, I think, the discussion to like what's been going on in our world. So again, that is going to be mm -hmm. an eye-opening experience. And this, this is new. And, and kind of realizing I, I was in this group last night and we were talking about um, what were we saying you know some people get turned off by the chip on their shoulder feeling you know when any like aura mm -hmm. and this is a this is a group that it's a safe place to, to to like be okay let's put it on the table bad ugly and different and let's examine it because we all want to be better yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and certain people are bringing up certain things and um so for me, it was great to hear like, it's okay for us to be uncomfortable right now. Can, can you imagine hundreds of years being uncomfortable? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah. uncomfortableness mm -hmm. of, of also like, oh, well, you know, just whatever that means for everyone. The idea mm -hmm. of sitting in that gray, uncomfortable place right now is part of the learning. Right. Yeah, I get right. yeah, I'm experiencing the same thing. Yeah. So, so it's okay and it's not fun and it's not going to be fun, but I'm excited to be to, to be better. Mm -hmm. When you talk about things I, yeah. I, I without getting specific, you know, the specifics, this isn't therapy, but um oh, yeah. we, can, we can make it therapy <laughs> if you want. Um, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> um, but I'm curious when you talk about a sense of you know, like things that I should have said or something like what sorts of things come come to mind about what are examples of things that somebody could have or should have said something where they didn't that I'm, I'm always curious about that. I think, you know, in all like, uh, for instance, I'm trying to think personally, if I if I heard someone say something semi semi racist in a yeah. person, whether it be a side comment or right or um, a grievance that maybe right. someone said that I said, you know, I don't want to get involved. It, I mean, not in a big way, not like yeah. someone, it wasn't huge, but it's, they call, you know, microaggressions, like little things, the slight things. Um, and also from, not just from top to bottom in the industry, in all the rooms, from, you know, all of the rooms, there are conversations, people are, having people are starting to talk about the things that like, you know, not what, well, for, uh, you know, all different. I don't want to like air anyone's stuff, but meaning not actively wanting to bring to the table diversity without having it to be like, well, we have to go this with that role and we have to this and like, you know, 
well, there's, you know, I, we've heard things like, well, there's no, um, you know, they're all in Hamilton and we can't find anybody else. Like things like, you know, like crazy things, like that's a casting thing or they're, you know what I'm 100 saying? 100% percent of the people of color in this country are in Hamilton. <laughs> it's an amazing stat. But the only talented people are there. So we can't find oh, that's true. Else. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, wait a second, there's, there's so many pools of talent yeah, of course. Yeah, and not just actors. There's directors, choreographers, and you know musicians. I, 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 I will, and because my neighbor is never going to see this, and she's an awesome person, and she wouldn't care if I said this, but I have a neighbor, and she's in not in our uh, world. Yeah, she's in a, a technical part of the business, mm -hmm. and she, um, she had uh, a, a very young black up and coming sound um, sound major that he wanted to get into sound design. And she brought him to work to kind of say, hey, you know, he wants to intern, he wants to kind of whatever. And it was quickly dismissed. It was sort of like, well, you know, because of his color. Wow. Primarily, and she was saying to me, and she was kind of in tears about it, that she she looks back at that moment and she regrets it and she feels like she should have went she should have done more she should have brought it back to the table and said and it wasn't but it wasn't overt it was slight yeah it yeah, was yeah. Slight, mm -hmm. and yeah. the discussion we had and you know both of my neighbors are married to black men and they have mixed children and they're both the women are both white and the conversation we were having is all of us, we were professionals in the arts, different areas of the arts. Mm -hmm. We were, we had opportunities. We were given a shot. We were given a break. At some mm -hmm. point, all of us were given that one little break that got us to the next level. And so many people don't have that opportunity yeah. 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 to get to that next level because they don't have the introduction or the, or the things that we have so naturally mm -hmm. um, because, because, and that really stuck with me because I was like, wow, I've been so privileged on so yeah. many levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I need to kind of sit back and listen, even though maybe the way I say things are wrong, the way I've addressed people are wrong, you know, it, and, and I'm 43 years old, proud of it, but like, I've been on this earth a long time, like maybe I've been doing things wrong. I know I've been doing certain things wrong with it. not a good person, but I just, I could be better, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fa It's just utterly fascinating navigating through all this stuff, but obviously long overdue and, and important and mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. it's challenging in the best way, really. And, and, you know, I, I applaud I'm your I'm scared. I, I mean, I'm, I'm scared in the sense that like, it's so new. It makes me, it makes me uncomfortable that I'm going to piss people off or like me or you know and we're allowed to to disagree you know we're all human beings we're all not gonna always yeah and yet you know it's it's complicated anyway sorry to cut you off no 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 it, it's it's uh it's just you know it's important stuff for us to talk about um for sure um i i'm uh, i'm just gonna quickly pivot us into talk about craft and acting yes. and stuff a little bit but, the, other, but, uh, the, other, the other stuff too, yeah. The, the other stuff too. Um, <laughs> you know, just, just, I wonder if you can just give us a quick, quick overview of your, your background and, and, you know, how you came up and, and stuff. And, um, you know, we don't have to spend, uh, I was spending three, I was planning on spending three days on this part. Um, <laughs> if you're up for that. Um, that, that's your game, right? Yes, totally. There's okay, like, good. I, I want to tell you like, uh, something that that just cracks me up um i've always loved you i totally 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 immediately and the for some reason one of the funniest things i remember we were we we'd done something together maybe it was a, a session or something on one of the things you were writing and we were walking and we walked by a strip club and you just kind of rolled your eyes and went oh i have to go to work and then you walked <laughs> you walked you stepped into the strip club <laughs> i thought that was so when we were, when we, that time we worked together, I still have all my notes. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't leave them at the club. That's amazing. Well, you know. 
you know, yeah. that's my yes there, but my angles can't deal with it. <laughs> but yeah, no, how did you, how did you come up? Did you, did you, you're in New Jersey. Did you grow up in New Jersey? I did. So I'm, um, I'm really good at this part. So, okay. <laughs> right, so uh, grew up in Jersey, um, classical music as a kid. Yeah. Uh, played Carnegie Hall at nine years old, was in that track. Not wow. like, um, but did you, did you solo at, at Carnegie Hall at that age? Not, not in the big hall, in the small hall, but I won yeah. a big competition. So like, yeah. I thought that the smaller one, but my parents were like, this is where she's going. And I was like, no, I'm not. Uh, I need to be in front of the piano. I'm funny. This is boring. But I learned all my musicianship from Carmela Cicero, my first piano teacher. She taught me that notes on a page is telling a story. Mm. And I read uh, uh, and drew the music, Chopin, wrote those notes to tell the story. And it's your job to paint the story. So I said, okay, I love doing that. Now, Wait a minute, I have a question. I have a question. You were at Carnegie Hall as a pianist? As a pianist. Yes, at nine. Yeah. I was at, nine. at nine. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know it that. Very, it, was, it was, I mean, it was awesome. And it right. was very uh, intense. And I was yeah. like in that intense world. Um, I had a teacher that did that same thing with the story thing. It's it, amazing. It was a guy named Mortimer Markov, and I was—I'm a pianist too. Um, and I was, uh, and when I was little, um, I guess I had a lot of aptitude. I was one of these people that had like a ton of aptitude and you know no discipline. Um, but uh, as a as a kid, I was often I was often just sort of shuffled off to these very high powered teachers. And they would kind of go like, he's not really practicing, but you know, he's, he's good. And, and, uh, and then, it, it, and then uh, I got, I kept going to higher and higher power teachers until I ended up with this guy, Mortimer Markov, who I didn't realize was like one of the top teachers in the world. And people would fly from all over to study with this guy. And I remembered my first piano lesson, I went in and he, he you know, he was this very soft spoken, gentle man. And he said something like, he said, well, why don't you play, play something, you know? And so I played this Haydn sonata and he goes, oh, oh yeah. And so uh, what's the story? And, and, I, and I went, um, well, uh, what do you mean? He goes, well, like, and it was this, this piece that begins with this, you know, first this is a percussive chord at the beginning. He goes, well, what's that? And I went, it's a D major chord. He goes, no, I, I don't know. What do you think? Maybe it's a cat jumping out. And I was like, uh, okay and he goes let's let's do it and he had a grand piano right next to mine and he would like you know do this thing in the couch and so i did that and he goes and what are those those little notes falling he goes maybe those are the mice running around and i was like uh, okay and then we and and i yeah. of all the people i've been exposed to uh he's certainly amongst the top of the list of teaching me what art is and what artistry is i just i didn't mean to get off in that long way to say yeah so <laughs> So Leslie, you, right. No, but it's so important, Seth, because Carmela Cecier from Chatham, New Jersey, is still the single hand, that one person, and she's still, to this day, we still talk, she's the one that was the, that was the jumping point to everything else, because the musicianship, I was never good at theory, I hated it, I hated to go to theory class with all the group of other girls who were, like, so disciplined, not me, um, but I had that thing I had that presence that musicality and when she clicked into that I was like I got it I know how to play pretend so yeah. I know this is like playing pretend this is like creating a character on the without even knowing that intellectually I just did it um so I was very good up to like 13 and then I was like you know this is not for me like this is not something wanted, I want to get in front of the piano. I need to get out. This is very limiting. And classical music is, it's limiting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I knew I was going to grow up and like play Shostakovich. Like I'm not, that's not me. So then that led to me taking voice lessons with Carmela, my teacher's friend, Jane Bunnell, who's at the Met. And I started singing classical voice and I learned everything from her. That classical voice, even though I had already grown up with jazz, because my dad was a jazz musician. And an oh, what did he play? Sax. Oh, wow. Okay. So we grew up with the Nancy Wilson music and the best of the best. And my mother's Puerto Rican, so we grew up with Latin music. And I was like, well, 
this classical music is great. And I wound up doing all the big choirs in high school and all of the, you know, soprano one, but I was like, still, I'm funny. Like I got this thing, <laughs> and this is not me. I'm making radio shows in my room, with my tape recorder. Like this is still not me, but I sing and I'm funny. So <laughs> what am I doing? So then I started doing shows in high school. I wasn't the star of my high school. I also was a hot mess. I was not getting good grades, but that was my home. And I, I did a vlog for Broadway.com during Beetlejuice. And I went back to my high school and I said, you know, for all the people in high school, and it, it gets me emotional every time. If you feel like, you know, I'm like, if you feel like the theater and the arts or whatever is your thing, that's where, where it feels like home. It feels like that for a reason, you know? It, it shows me, I didn't choose it. So I went there and that's where I felt safe. I felt like I was, I don't know, that's where I belonged. I found my people, right? Mm -hmm. And from, you know, I did a couple of parts, you know, uh, I did the female version of The Odd Couple, hilarious. Um, <laughs> Wait a minute. I did Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. Okay, yeah, Oscar. so I was just like, Oscar, Oscar. did the children's hour, but I built but What's the, well, her name's not Oscar in the show, right? What's, what's her Olive. name? Olive. 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 Olive, Olive. right. Yeah. It's in the yearbook. Uh, it's not a picture anymore. Anyway, um, so I'm doing this and doing that. I said, well, I'm going to go to school for musical theater. And all my friends were like Garnet Cornell and Brown. And I'm like, well, I got a 900 on my SAT. So let's, I'm winking a prayer, but I think I can do this. I think I'm really good. I think I can do this. And, um, and so I applied to a couple of schools. I got into Cincinnati Conservatory of Music. Yeah. And um, I went there, you know, I'll just fast track. I went there for four years, it was very competitive. Um, you know, people get eliminated from your class up to, I think at the time, sophomore year. Mm -hmm. Graduated with 20, moved to New York in 99, and then slowly started to like make my way. But pretty early at 24, I did a production of. Funny Girl at the Paper Mill Playhouse, and that kind of set me up. That set me up. That was my break. Yeah. That was my my personal break, and I was temping. I did all the thing. I did all the struggles that every the temping. And you played you played Fanny Bryce. Played Fanny Bryce. Yeah. And and everyone and their mother came to see it. It was awesome. I was like, this is it. I made it. I'm gonna be a star. It's going to Broadway. Yes, it definitely is going to Broadway. Boom, and then 9/11 happened. Mm. And then that. And did. Yep. And so I just say that for anyone that like, you know, I, I, I always bring that up because a lot of people have big opportunities when they're young and then then things don't go their way. Something happened, yeah. So I just want to say it's totally fine. You'll be okay. We'll get over yeah. it. It'll take 10 years, but you'll get over it. Um, and then, uh, and then you know, I did, I did a lot of regional theater and then it like, and then I got, um, I was on tour with a show called You're in Town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I got a call to audition for Hairspray on Broadway mm -hmm. to replace my friend Shoshana Bean, who I went mm -hmm. to college with. Mm -hmm. Moving on to do something else. I flew in, I auditioned, and I got my Broadway debut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing. And then and then from there, I did Trailer Park and a, and a bunch of other shows. And um, yeah. I've done some television and stuff, but I've been in New York for over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. I know, isn't that weird how it, how it happens? I am there, I remember Michael Mastrogo saying to me, and do you guys, you guys know Michael Mastrogo? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. oh, I know who he is anyway. He lives in my neighborhood, but mm -hmm. I don't know if we've ever met actually. Yes, he goes, he goes, you know what? Wait till you can say you're here for 20 years. He's like, just wait, just wait. And I'll rem I remembered like, when I came to New York, I paid to like sit and have a conversation about what the fuck do you do in the arts? How do I do this? Yeah. And he was like, just wait till you're 40, just wait. And I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, okay, okay. That's never gonna happen, but okay. And now here it is, it's like 43, over 20 years. And it's, it's been great. It's yeah. Been great. yeah, yeah. And everyone's yeah. path is uh, so different. Um, like you yeah. come to New York and you're, you're doing your thing and you don't quite know where your path is going and you just kind of keep 
taking one step at a time, one audition at a time, just kind of keep going. And it starts to, you know, careers happen to us rather than us making our career. Um, they happen to you, right? Yeah. yeah. And walk into the right rooms. Like when I came, and I'm not like, this is not like a plug, but this is the truth. I always say, I was scared of Seth because <laughs> I would do it. I came to the Barrel Group because I was like, this is where I need to go. And I think my friend Jacob White, Jacob White, yeah, White yeah, Jacob, Jacob White. White. Jacob White was like, you gotta go to the Barrel Group. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to the Barrel Group. I'm gonna be like, I need to learn how to be an actor because I feel like a, a buffoon. And I just need to be, you know, I just want to work with someone that like, will tell me the deal. And so I never forget so You looked at me and you were like, we, we did the scene. And you looked at me. He said, so how did that go for you? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no. We're like, so tell me about it. And I don't I'm know. Like, this is exactly where I belong. Love this guy. <laughs> and we, in our class, it was so, it was just so great. And your book is great. Did you write another book? No, I'm actually, during this time, I've started, started writing a started. book. Right. I don't know, I don't, you know, I'm actually, because the last book was just, really just practical tips and, and tricks to use okay. on the job, right? But I, I'm actually, some folks have asked me to write a book about acting, like, you know, how do you act kind of thing, which I don't know how you do that. But, uh, really? but I am, but I am, uh, I did start to start to write it. And so the working title at the moment is An Approach to Acting. And, uh, you know, it's, it's what it is. It's coming along. It's coming along. Well, it's, <laughs> It's great, and you know, I've been lucky enough, like we said, I've been lucky enough to have great teachers mm. along the way, not only going to class and also admiring your work, obviously with, with um, directing and, and your artistic collaborations and stuff, but within shows, having other cast members that I've respected, watching their work, I always say I've probably learned the most on the job, Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. watching other people and the practice of the craft, the practice of being in the moment eight shows a week all the time. And my, my most favorite is rehearsal more than the yeah. actual performing. I love rehearsal the most. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you love about rehearsal? The process of rehearsal um, is great because uh, you re it's really about discovering all the ways and approach something and all of the things you throw against the wall especially with comedy you know what stuff works what stuff doesn't and working with your team and, and feeding off of each other because it's play it's play but it's disciplined play mm -hmm. before everything gets kind of locked in mm -hmm. and then you got to do it you know you're, you're doing it within the corral rehearsals more like Let's just see. And, and a lot of the shows that I've done, we we wind up, you're writing in the rehearsal. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny you kind of say how, oh, when you uh, when you freeze it or when you lock it in, just watching you perform in some of those big musicals, you were so uh, spontaneous and unpredictable within that locked in form. You're one of those performers that we can't stop watching because you're still like so alive within that form. And I... I think that is a it's an amazing thing that you have mastered uh within those big musicals and keeping it all you know fresh and alive when people feel like it's locked you might be uh the choreography might be locked and you know the all that stuff but you were still so alive within that which is uh amazing yeah there, I, i'm curious leslie you know like i my my experience of the musical world is that you know that's when you hear even terms like show frozen and and sure. lock it down and, and you know um things being eggy or or not and, and and stuff like that but i'm wondering have you have you had the opportunity to work on something that that continued to evolve past uh past opening and and the, because it was the nature of the piece where the, where they didn't want things locked down meaning uh, text-wise, or just anything? well, not 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 so much text-wise, uh, although it could be that too if, if the writer's involved. But just where they, you know, people will basically encourage you to try try out new things and play around and stuff. I think I mean people that work with me know that 
and they say it work. And I'm, I'm proud of that they say this. They say, when you're going on stage with Leslie, you really don't know what's going to happen. You know that, <laughs> you know that she's going to do what she's supposed to do. She's not going to go off the rails. But I never do anything the same. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it's a living, breathing. Like, when I watch, look, when I watch Mike, I yeah. know it's Mike. That's a reference. That, you're talking about Mike Birbiglia, right? Yeah. I know his set is the way it is. I know the show is the way it is, but it never feels the same. It never, you know, even if it is, it never feels that way. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. With me, I feel like the same way. I mean, you get, you, as, you know, with me though, I'm going on with different people all the time. Sometimes there's understudies. Yeah. So with me, I never, I'm always thinking. Yeah. I love when other people go on. Cause I'm like, great. I, I got something new to play with. Um, but the, even so, Adam Danheiser, who played opposite me in Beetlejuice, would be like, do you think that table thing's working anymore? And I'm like, I don't know. I feel like we're doing this. All right, you want to try this and then we wait for a second? Okay, great. We would do that literally five seconds before we'd walk on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would start trying new things musically. Uh, I would ask permission. I would say to my conductor, Chris, I'd be like, hey, Chris, can I try this? Do you mind? It doesn't you know, within reason, so it's respectful. He's like, yeah, and I tried it, then it stayed. Then there'd be some performances I take it out. Then there'd be some, a performance where I wasn't technically allowed to pop up to the really high note, but I was feeling great, and I said, it's an awesome crowd. Okay, so. <laughs> Wait a minute, when you say you weren't technically uh, allowed, what do you mean? Well, there's, okay, so when, when I, in Beetlejuice, there's a, there's a number that I do as Miss Argentina. And it's called uh, What I Know Now. The end of the song, it's supposed to go up to a certain note. Yeah. And then I, I'm always, and again, I'm always thinking. So that's why I'll, I'll do di different things every, every, almost every show within reason. But, and sometimes they're so slight, you wouldn't even know. Right. Just because I think it's fun. But <laughs> this particular night, I was like thinking, I was like, I think I can hit that note. It's still in the chord. It's <laughs> awesome. I feel good. It's not crazy. Let's try it. And let's not ask. Let's just do it. It's not going to mess up anybody. It's just me out there. And it's the last note of the song, and I'm dead center. So I did it. <laughs> uh, people are watching Chris's face on the, the, <laughs> the monitor. You know, he's conducting like yeah. this. And the speech manager just said, when I hit it, he was like. <laughs> <laughs> and what would happen is I hit it and I nailed it. And the audience went crazy. And I think that particular night, there were a lot of people that were already familiar with the show there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like the perfect time. It was either an actor's fun performance. So I was like, oh, I'm going to give them something that they haven't heard on the, the recording. So, I do the number and then the other character comes in and we all shuffle aside because we're scared. And I always on stage right, I was like this, and I could see Chris and I always look at him and he looked at me and he's like. <laughs> 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 so, and I talked to the conductor the entire show. Again, something that no one would ever know except um, my stage manager. I'll be in the number and having a full, full scale eye conversation with Chris, because that's like we're a team. Right. And to the point where we have shorthand without having to say anything. Yeah. Right. The most brilliant thing. It's the same thing that Judy Garland had with her, with her band. It's the same thing, like, it's just, it's it's a football player has with his coach. Yeah, it's yeah. That same thing. And it's, you know, I don't miss doing eight shows a week, I'll be honest. I, yeah. don't, I don't miss the grind of that, especially with our schedule, which was really hard. But yeah. I do miss the connection and I miss I miss that not the applause, I miss the energy. Yeah, I yeah. The mm. I miss the people a lot. Yeah. 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 yeah it's so interesting to see how that will how that will evolve, re -evolve and return in the future. Uh, um, I'm, I'm doing a concert and, and <clears throat> this is a controversial thing, but do you know Julie Boyd? Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. yeah. I was just on the phone with her today, but she said, listen, and I had known that she was in that big New York Times article. And for people that don't know, Barrington Stage is the theater in the Berkshires. 
It's in Pittsfield, and Julie Boyd is their artistic director. And there was this big New York Times article about her taking all the seats out and doing some stuff um, on their main stage. And I've done a ton of shows up there. My husband also is a, an artist in residence up there. And um, she asked me to do a solo concert on their main stage. Yeah. Um, so it's just the demon and I. And I was like, are we, are we allowed? Like, uh. like, what is that? So I was like, well, if the governor doesn't, if the gov I mean, theaters are opening up there, yeah. but it's doing a season, not even Tanglewood. So I said, okay. And there's a couple other people that are doing some a concert up there. And so it's called, um, is it over yet? And um, at the time, I thought that was funny. Now I'm like, hey, can I? <laughs> <laughs> I got a great idea for a show. It's cancer. <laughs> what do you think? Is it over yet? Uh, so I'm going to make fun of that, obviously. But but I am doing that. So we're going to see up to then how things progress. And we, had ju we just got off the phone today talking more about it. So I, I do. I am doing this concert. So we'll see wow. what, that, what, what that means. Um, I'm going to just open this out to folks um, and, and it, no, it's so great. Um, we'll continue talking while we're waiting for questions, but if you have a question, go ahead and post in the participants thing, raise your hand and we'll call on you. And just as a reminder, if uh, we do call on you, just go ahead and turn on your video and unmute your microphone and, and we can converse. Um, in the meantime, we'll talk more. Um, I asked that thing about, um, you know, about have you been in shows where they allow you to evolve? Because my experience is that in the in musical theater, it's there's a seems to be a lot more, um, you know, I, I've talked to, I mentioned it earlier, but there really is this thing about, you know, kind of locking in on something. Yes. Uh, why, why do you think that is? I mean, I, and I'm talking about aside from choreography, I, I'm talking about just it could, could be the book part, but there's the same kind of thing. What do you think? that's about it is you're right there is a frozen thing in musical theater I think I think, I don't know why that um, that term is used so much and it doesn't even matter if it's a big show or a small show uh, it's just the lingo and I and I haven't even heard it like when I've been when I've done it in plays I, I don't remember hearing that right I I, I don't know Seth I honestly I it feels that I hear it more on big shows, to be honest, because I think I think because there's, at least with big shows, there's so many technical things happening mm -hmm. and technical things changing. Like, you know, when you're in tech rehearsal over and over and over again, or you're getting called in for three hours to do a scene transition and a this, and they change it every day during previews, and it never stays the same because they don't like it or they cut it or they add something else or they change the number or they cut the number and they add a new number. I think the term frozen is something also that we, and I, I have video from the day that we froze the show. We celebrated, it was our last rehearsal before the critics came. And the term itself, like the cast is so excited, but I, I don't think it necessarily means, to some actors it means I'm going to do the same show every night. And there are a lot of musical theater people that are like that. And I oh, can't, for sure. I yeah. really can't stand it. I actually like to fuck with them because it really annoys. I'm like, <laughs> are you feeling uncomfortable? You know, you know what I mean? Like life is not frozen. Like we're, <laughs> we are people in a show. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and um, so I think some musical theater people have a, very, but I think some actors in general, they have very, they want to do it like this every time and living out of their comfort zone is hard. But the, the frozen term, we celebrate it. It's, it's more, I think, because there's no more rehearsals during previews. Yeah. And that might be in, in the musical theater world because there's so much rehearsals. The longer preview, the longer, like when you get that rehearsals, the and you're looking at a month of previews, you want to kill yourself. Because you're like, that means a month of rehearsal every day from 10 to 6. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's maybe more of where I also think that part of the derivation of that is there's so much at stake financially. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're, that people are, they just are afraid. It's like, look at if we're coming up with something that works, 
can we just know that that's going to be there? Mm -hmm. um, and and it's 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 uh, it's weird because I actually feel like. The other side of it, I think, if you think, you know, I'm obviously a, a huge believer, as, as is Lee. I think it's safe to, that you feel the same way about this. I don't, that, know, I don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, that um, it, it's, I'm actually most interested in things that continually evolve. Mm -hmm. And that I feel like, you know, you can arrive at incredible competency, but if you allow for things to continually evolve, that's when you get to things that are transcendent. Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> And, and so, you know, and, and part of the game is figuring out how to stay loose and constantly evolving within, within systems that want more structure. And then when you have that rare opportunity to be in a system that actually encourages a little more free play uh, to, you know, take advantage of that fully. Um, when you were in vinyl, did, did uh, was it the same kind of a thing? Did you have a sense that, that uh, because the reason I'm asking is that in my experience in film and television, they tend to be a little looser. Uh, but was it that way with that show or, or? I mean, I didn't do many episodes of it badly, but I felt um, different. I mean, I felt different in the sense because I'm on set and I'm new and, uh, and it, I was scared and I just wanted to be good. Um, but once I got rolling and once the director was like, yeah, punch the pillow after this, you know, do this. And, and then I was like, and I'm laying in bed with Ray Romano and, uh, you know, I'm like, he's as nervous as me, like between two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. And like, everyone's just kind of like trying to get it right because they want to be good too. And I'm like, you had a hit television show and huge stand-up career, and I'm just a theater person. How are you so nervous? And I'm, yeah. then I was like, fuck it, you know, we're the same. I mean, we're both trying to figure this out. We're both trying to be good. The camera's like right here. Um, so it made me relaxed when I saw the humanity in these giants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so then I started to play more, and then the more we did it, more, I was like, especially when I had the hair and the outfit, all of that, and the nails. I mean, I was like, oh, I know this one. It's like, <laughs> this is like my mother, but really Jewish, you know? So it was like, it was fun. It was, and that's how I felt actually in the audition room, too. Yeah. This was, I, I played, and, and that's how I try to, in, in all of these rooms now, especially for for um, TV and film, I try to, to remember that because there's, yeah. there's a tendency to be stiff because of the camera and not be like you want, don't want to be too big or you don't want to be whatever. And the more I'm doing like self taping and practicing it, the more I'm trying to remember without judging what I look to have that sense of. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I see that Karina has a question and Karina, go ahead and. Uh, unmute and turn on your video. There you are. Hi. Um, hey. Hi. Um, I have a question. Hi, Leslie. I'm a big Hi. fan. Oh, cool. <laughs> Love your background. So pretty. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I have kind of a specific question, but I'm very curious about it. I, I saw Beetlejuice in November, and I was so excited to see you, and um, it is amazing, obviously. And I'm so glad you mentioned Miss Argentina. Because my question is, I want to know if you can tell me about the quick change from Delia to Miss Argentina and then back. Because that was insane. So I'm just yeah. curious if you can talk about that or like what that was like or were you stressed? Like what was, what was the Very, deal? Very stressed. Um, is that the one, Leslie, that you posted online? Because there, yeah, there's a video. There's a video of that change. Oh. Yeah, there's a video of the change. I had said to them, I said, I get so many messages from people asking me how I do that. And why don't we have Playbill or someone give us one of those GoPros, we'll stick them on the mirror, we'll edit out anything that they don't need to see in the sense of like when I actually take my clothes off. Um, but let's show them the makeup change and show them how many people are on me so they can kind of see how that really works. That, um, 
that changed basically when they decided to make Miss Argentina part of the show and they did not understand how I was going to go from one scene to the other. And you guys will appreciate this. I said, okay, this is how it's going to work. Like everyone's like, guys, we, we can't, we can't, how are we going to do this? How are you going to do this? And I said, I already figured it out. <laughs> I'm going to exit the scene sooner because I was supposed to stay there longer. Meanwhile, I wasn't talking. I was like, ah, like there, it's like a whole 30 seconds of me just back like this and all these other people are talking. I'm like, let me scream, flip over the couch, crawl off stage, jump, uh, run into the quick change machine. And the, um, William Ivy Long and I, and um, some, of the, uh, some other people on the team, we said, if she, I said, if I can do that, and we can figure out how to undress the Argentina costume under my black and white dress, I can definitely do this makeup change. I can definitely do the change. So they designed the outfit so that it can fit underneath my dress. So when I rip it off, it's already on under tights. And then the makeup team said, okay, now we have to figure out how we're gonna do this. They designed a makeup that was a powder mix that they literally can do this instead of alpha the paint. It's not like paint, it's powder. And um, we figured out how we can do that. And I had five people on me and the whole team got together. And the first time we did it and made it work, it was amazing. I was, I was stressed. But we worked so closely together. Uh, we called it the Miss Argentina Road Crew. And we did it. But it was really me going, telling the creative team first, like, guys, this is totally doable. I've done 15 second quick changes in regional theater in Bumble, upstate New York. I know that I can make this work. I know I can make it work. And because we have the best team in the business, like, working on this. Huge is, is it on is it on youtube because they should watch it it's on if you google leslie Kritz or miss argentina quick change it's on yeah. Playbill. it's oh, on, okay. if you go to my instagram page too it's also on instagram it's yeah. really cool it's really it is cool. it is really cool um mm -hmm. we have time for one more question and then believe it or not we're we're, we're, we're out of here this is going right. so fast uh benjamin I see, I see you have your hand raised and uh what's your question hi benjamin nice to meet you um so as you uh, noted earlier, uh, obviously uh, self tapes are a huge thing now. Um, always were, but like now it's all we got, right? Uh, so what do you, do you have any um, tactics that you use to like keep yourself playful in those self tapes and um, not just like sink into the same thing? Um, well, I, like you, like everyone, I'm still learning because I feel more new to the idea of making them on my own. Like I've always struggled with it. I've always had to do it during pilot season, especially and all this stuff. I think having that a very clear sort of moment before and also obviously like Seth would say and, and you know, both of you guys would say was making really sure that I know the text and very familiar with what I want in the scene, what the point of the scene is, what part of the story of the script that I'm in, if you're, if you're able to have a script for the scene. Um, but mostly I find what has really helped is not letting it, letting the, letting the tape roll, letting the camera roll and just keep doing it. Don't actually stop or actually start it with the camera on and just have your sort of process and not even do a, I'm gonna start now because that always stops me. Yeah. I almost feel like in the beginning, I'm just kind of living in the space and kind of wherever that is. And I keep doing it. I do the scene maybe two or three times now and I don't stop. I don't stop to restart. I make sure my phone or whatever I'm using is so clear so that I can have, I can feel more natural because it's not a natural thing, especially you're, and sometimes, especially now, you're not acting in a room with someone. Mm -hmm. You don't have a real reader. You can have a reader on, and there's so many things that people are using now to have a reader on like your computer or something with you. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of auditions now, obviously, <laughs> but, but I think that's something I've picked up from working with some people remotely now that has really helped me. And also to trust, trust yourself. Uh, and and um, 
be real, you know, just talk. I mean, I think Seth, you, you in class, you said that, you know, it's just, just talk, you know, like talk like a person, not like a, what you think the character should be, or a lot of times I do so much better when I'm just more myself, even if it's not the idea, just more, my, more who I am. Yeah, um, absolutely. There they go. Oh, by the way, Seth, I just want to say, you. you were amazing in the plot against America. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I think I only had one scene in that whole thing. Seriously. Oh, oh, thank you, Benjamin. Oh, God. Um, anyway, um, thank you. That, believe it or not, that our time is so up. Um, oh. Leslie, I am thrilled that you, you did this. And I look forward to seeing you in person and giving you a big old hug oh. and, and, uh, Both and are awesome. doing, and thank let, you me, so let me know about, like, uh, I'm going to just follow about what you guys are doing. And yeah. I can do something remotely too. I've, that's I'm still great. working on myself. Yeah, that's so good. And, and, and you know, I um, I look forward to. We will do something together. I, I just, I just, I, I just, it's mm. destiny. Um, okay. All right. Very good. Thank uh, you. Be thank well, you and so thanks much. everybody. Thanks for coming um, in. Thanks everybody. for coming in. Just as a reminder, uh, you can go to barrowgroup.org for uh, uh, to take a look at what. Our, all of our online programming. We have a lot of free programming. We also have our regular class offerings and all of that stuff, barrowgroup.org. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, everybody have a great, uh, a great day, week, everything. All right, Be bye. well. Take care. Bye.